Hey guys and gals, Jack Spierko here with episode 100, 100 of Miyagi Mornings. It's also kind of a uh, special episode in that you will not hear from me again, on Miyagi Mornings anyway, until all the way till the 17th of May. It's the last episode for a while. I'm going on vacation starting next week. I'm not actually leaving this weekend or Monday or anything like that. I won't be leaving till later in the week, but I'm not going to be doing Miyagi Mornings next week. Something has to give next week so that I can have enough like uh, rewinds and stuff like that on the podcast for people. Again, people that are watching me on YouTube and have never been to my website, my YouTube channel is not my podcast. I don't podcast on YouTube. I podcast as a podcaster. I'm on Stitcher and iTunes and all that stuff. So you might want to check out my website link in the notes below uh, if you haven't done so and maybe subscribe to my podcast because if you like this, you'll really like the podcast. Anyway, um, Today's episode, I thought it would be fitting to do something a little bit deeper, a little bit more meaningful for episode 100, and for sort of like a temp, not a goodbye, but a see you later episode, right? I'm going to be gone for a few weeks and recharging my batteries. And I'm going to be, I was thinking about as I walked around today, checking out the damage to my property. We just recently had a pretty nasty hailstorm, and what I think was probably like an F-Zero spin-up brief tornado, honestly. Like, it didn't really damage things badly, but it screwed up my plants. It set me back. Um... Punched a bunch of holes in the roof of my uh, my greenhouse, which is getting replaced anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, fortunately, the cars were in, in the shop and protected. Um, it blew hail the size of, like, a little bit smaller, like, I'd say about ping pong, maybe a little smaller than ping pong balls, up into my back door, which is only impressive because there's a 20-foot roof there. So it blew those hail stones 20 feet horizontally. Punched holes in my outdoor speakers. This is a pretty interesting thing, but... The big thing is it set me back a lot on my planting and stuff like that. You know what, guys? That's the real world. That's what we're talking about today. What is the real world? Like, Let's start off with what the real world isn't. The real world is not on your television screen at all, even a little bit. Like, Even the documentaries that you watch that are actually useful and educational are not the real world. They're created in some idealistic manner with an agenda to lead you to some conclusion rather than just purely it is what it is. The news was never just the news. The never, news was never just the facts. The news has been a propaganda machine since it was first created, since the first TVs went into the first homes, the first radios, you know, after Marconi invented the radio and it, it became a thing and the infrastructure was built. All the news has always been propaganda. There's no doubt that it's worse now, but it's always been propaganda. And hence, since it's propaganda and since it has an agenda, it cannot, will not, and will never be the real world. The real world is not even, when you look at your friends your real friends, IRL friends, in real life friends on social media, most of the time, most of the time, I'm going to give an exception to this community here in a second. Most of the time, that's not the real world either. Even if you're seeing their actual backyard, even if you're seeing their actual house and they're wearing their actual clothes and they're doing their heart hands on on uh, yeah, Instagram for Instagram models or whatever, these are all curf- carefully constructed views into the lives of individuals so that they control what other people see. That's why people love filters, so they can make themselves look a little younger, a little thinner, a little prettier, whatever. Very seldom do you get complete and total reality from people. I I know some people really like to take selfies all the time and then say they don't want attention, right? And then they act, they, they, they feign, like, indignation because, like, if it's a girl, like, there's guys contacting me all the time. Well, maybe if you didn't post four or five selfies a day, Right. They wouldn't think that you were, uh, you know, and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it is. Right. And, and so there's a there's a disconnect there from reality for a lot of people. The exception has been many of the members of this community. And it's an interesting phenomenon. And I think it's why we do these workshops here. We'll have 60, 70, 80 people here, you know, for a week. Uh, on my property, camping in, in my backyard and hanging out in my garage, which we turn into basically a great big nightclub, you know. And people that are workaday people that go to work every day, that live really, you know, their neighbors would think really normal lives. They don't go out and party. They don't go out to bars. Or they're up till 3 o'clock in the morning, sometimes later. You know why? They don't want it to end. Because they're surrounded by people who do not have their shields up, that are not pretending to be something that they're not. And that's why I think that actually when we look at things like our MeWe groups and stuff like that, we actually do see at least a glimpse of reality in the lives of people, it doesn't seem as filtered as it does everywhere else. And I don't mean me, we as a thing. I mean the community here that are willing to let their shields down and stop pretending to be something that they're not. That's part of the real world. But it is so much deeper than that. The real world is first admitting your fragility and your mortality. 
if you do that, you're not afraid of the COVIDs. See, people think when you admit your fragility, and I mean not the way that the woke crowd uses that term. I mean the fact that you, as a being, are relatively fragile. That storm we had, if you'd been standing out there, if I'd been standing out there, and you had 70, 80 mile an hour winds gusting through with, with hailstones that big, and you get hit in the bean with that, hey, if it took out Goliath, right? We are fragile beings. You could be driving to work tomorrow, get hit by a gravel truck. I've used that analogy forever because have you seen one? Have you seen one of those 10-ton gravel trucks rolling down the road? Those things don't even have a suspension. They're like just attached to their freaking axles. You get hit with that, you're dead. Millions of people die every day. Death is one thing that we're assured of. We will all die. None of us are getting out of life alive. And it's an acceptance of that. And you stop being afraid of things like the COVIDs. Right? Like, well, you could get sick and die. I could get sick and die tomorrow. I could get cancer. That's when all this shit started. I stayed in the real world. I didn't go to fantasy land. I was posting pictures of my grandkids and I fishing and listening to classic rock music. Right at the beginning, of this when everybody was freaking out. When people were disowning their dogs because the TV said your dog could give you COVID. And they're like, you're letting your grandchildren come out? I'm like, what am I going to do? Hide from my grandchildren? Well, you could get COVID. I could get liver cancer. I could get pancreatic cancer tomorrow. I could get a diagnosis. I could have a brain tumor. I could have an aneurysm. I could have a heart attack. I could have a congenital heart defect that was never spotted. And one day I could see him in perfect health and in two seconds be dead. It happened to a good friend of mine and it happened to a very famous actor. Remember John Ritter? He died on a set of a movie that he was making. They said if he had been standing in an ER with the greatest heart surgeon available on planet Earth standing next to him when it happened, he still would have died. He bled out that fast. It was a congenital defect. It just happened. I'm not talking about being stupid and walking face long into dangerous situations as an idiot. I'm just saying when you come to grips with the fact that you are a fragile mortal being, you stop fearing death because you realize it's inevitable. And once you do that, then you can actually live in the real world. And until you do, I don't think you can. Because then you're going to always make things worse than they really are. See, people think that if you do this, if you, if you give in to this reality... That therefore you become more vulnerable. And because you're more, more vulnerable, you live in more fear. You start seeing all the ways that you could die. No, actually what happens is you stop bothering to look at the ways you could die. Because it doesn't matter how you die. It just matters that you're going to. So you still get the hell out of the way when a truck comes barreling down the road and is clearly out of control. You still don't do stupid shit like, I don't know, uh, play with bare electrical wires while you stand and water up to your knees. Unless you're stupid. Some people do. But most people that come to this conclusion, this reality check, they, 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 then they don't do stupid things like that because they recognize, well, yeah, I could die any day, any way, but that's a dumb thing to do. So you stop hiding in your closet surrounded by a toilet paper fort because, oh my God, the TV said you're going to get the COVIDs and die. You're like, you know, if something, if something is a disease that over 99% of people survive, that's not going to be the thing that I worry about today. There's other ways I could get taken out. And then the beauty opens. That's the other side, though. It's not all bad. Like, see, preppers are, are, are living in the real world because we accept that, like, a oh, power could go out. Uh, the grid could go down. Uh, there could be a trucker strike. There could be major supply shortages, and that shit is happening right now, by the way. And it will only get worse before it gets better. Um, we accept all these terrible things could happen. Well, that's reality. So then you put things in place to deal with them, and then you can live in the real world. Then you can actually live a happy, productive life. That's what happens when you accept this vulnerability, and then you see what's real. What's real, what's the real world, is when I go outside and my cat greets me because we formed a bond. That's the real world. When I open the door to the duck house in the morning and they come out excited to greet the day, that's the real world. A week and a half from now, when I'm standing on the beach up to, up to my waist in beautiful turquoise water, and there's nothing but a tiny thin line connecting me to a redfish or a snook or a shark that's peeling my drag off, and I watch that fish walk on top of the water, and that's only for me, and it only can be for me. Even if I hired a film crew to film me doing it, you could never experience it the way I'm experiencing it in that moment. Me versus that fish for that time. That's the real world. When you get up in the morning, and it's still dark out, and something inside you speaks, and you go make that cup of coffee, and it breaks you out of your slumber, and it's still dark out, 
and you could sleep another hour, but you don't because you realize something amazing is about to happen. You go somewhere, maybe outside your back door, maybe down the street, maybe to a special place, and you watch the sun rise. That's the real world. When you do the same thing on an evening and the sun hits the horizon and that last little bit of it, it just disappears and swallows it up and it goes away, but you know it'll be back tomorrow. That's the real world. When your child takes their first step, that's the real world. When your child holds your hand when you die as an old man, if you're fortunate to get to live to be an old man or an old woman, and they tell you it's going to be okay, you can go, that's the real world. And what these scum have done has, is taken that from people. People with their parents passing away, not able to be at their bedside because, oh, somebody can get COVID. Somebody's dying. And a lot of times not of COVID. It's just, you know, when we get old, we die. It's absolutely insane that you would worry about the health of a person who's dying, who's going to be dead tomorrow. Somebody should have been there with them. That's the real world. Everything that these people are doing is designed to hide the real world. Because the real world is harsh, but it's also beautiful. And the real world is worth everything to those that see it. And people that see the real world are ungovernable and they are uncontrollable. You cannot control a person once they see the real world for what it is. You can't. Because that person will always put value in liberty, freedom, and beauty above safety. The real world isn't safe. It never was. It never will be. Some of you young people that are terrified of a freaking cold need to grow the hell up already. I know you're still young, but grow up a little bit. My generation, we grew up that sometimes a bell would go off. And we would all hide under our desks because it was a, it was a drill for a nuclear war. We lived for 30, 40 years with the specter of eliminate, immediate, instant death for almost every living human being on the planet could come. You know what? We still went outside and played. Why not? If it could all end tomorrow, why not? That's the real world. There was a time in history where over centuries, smallpox killed 50 million people at least. And that was actually a disease that killed and disfigured and really destroyed people's lives. And it didn't just take people that were at the end of their life expectancy anyway. And I know some healthy people have died now. They're the exceptions, and we're not even looking into that. That would be the real world. Doing a blood panel on every single healthy person under 40 that didn't have comorbidities and determining what nutrients they were deficient in, real world. Pretending that you need to be afraid because that happened to this one person one place over here, Fake world. The real world is everything that is beautiful and everything that is deadly. The real world is everything that is without being shaped and sculpted by somebody else for you to see. This is something that's difficult to understand until you do, and then it is the most simple thing that you will ever do in your life. When you understand that, like I talked about with that sunrise, no one can do it for you. When you understand what that actually means, you can finally live in the real world. All the time. You will sense bullshit from a mile away. Like Spidey sense from the comic books. Like it, it has nothing on the bullshit detector a person develops once they live in the real world. Then and only then can you do that. When I get up in the morning and I go out there and I look at that. If you were standing right next to me. The experience is different. It's not the same. We're in the same place. Temperature's the same. We're looking pretty much the same angle. You know, if the hell with social distancing, we're a foot apart. We're looking at the same place, same time, same thing, maybe drinking the same cup of coffee. We can wear the same clothes. It won't be the same. It won't be the same with optics, but more importantly, it won't be the same in our spirits. We'll see it differently and we'll feel it differently. I only have one eye. Obviously, I'm going to see it different than you do. That's superficial. Only I can take in that moment for me and only you can take in that moment for you. And what has been done to make people behave in an unnatural and fearful and controllable state is to take away as many of those moments in the lives of people as possible. To convince people that working 40 hours a week is the real world. Why 40? Why not 45? Why not 35? Why not 38? Why not 39 hours and 51 minutes? Why 40? 
Why eight hours a day, five days a week? Because that's what a union wanted, and, and and Henry Henry Ford thought was a good idea too, for happy workers. But why forty hours a week? Like if you work forty hours a week, okay, you have a full time job. You're a responsible adult. But if I work twenty hours a week, I'm I'm slacking off. That's how people think today. Doesn't matter that I get more done or have a better life or build more value in the lives of others in that twenty hours. No, I should be working forty hours. We actually think this way. How can that possibly be the real world? We think the real world is like the clothing you wear, like some brand or something like that. You know, it's not the real world. The real world is the perception that you as a being have in your heart, your mind. And your spirit. And if you're a Christian, you do that through the lens of the Christian God. If you're a deist like me, you do that through not knowing, but knowing there's something else. If you're an atheist, you can do the same thing from natural systems. It, we don't know who's right. None of us know who's right in that. That's also the real world. The real world isn't I'm right and everybody else is wrong, especially with giant questions like the nature or existence of God. Until we can accept that no matter how much we believe a thing, we don't know a thing. And if we know a thing, we can't have faith. We have knowledge. We can't live in the real world. When we accept our complete helplessness and at the same time see our enormous power, then we live in the real world. And only then do we live in the real world. This is why tribal societies throughout the world have always done the same thing with their young men. They send them into the wilderness for a time to be alone, to contemplate, to feel that they can't do a thing, then to actually do a thing, and then to come back and be transformed and be different. If that's not a thing, if that's not real, then how did societies thousands and thousands of miles apart that never communicated with each other come up with basically the same system? That's the real world. When individuals who are not connected left to themselves in their own groups, end up with the same conclusion, you're probably on the right track. There's something greater and grander than us, and we are tiny, insignificant specks in the real world. And we are also, at the same time as a paradox, incredibly powerful beings, and one little thing that you do can have the butterfly effect and save a life. Not today or tomorrow, but seven generations from now. You will never know. You have passed on. You have gone to whatever is next. And something that you set in motion right now today could set a whole chain of events in motion that makes one person reach out at just the right time to save another person. How powerful is that? And yet, we can be wiped out in less time than it takes to blink. And it happens to thousands and millions of people every month. Time's up. It's over. It's the real world. And that makes the dash that is you. That when you die and they put that birth year and that death year and they put that little hyphen, that little dash in between those years somewhere. And that dash is you. That makes that dash incredibly precious. And if you understood that, you would not let yourself be controlled by this false fear that they have worked to place in you since the day you were born. You'd understand your own power and frankly, bluntly, and some of you can't handle this word, you need to hear it, you would say, fuck that. Fuck that. I am a powerful, powerful being. And at the same time, I am insignificant. It is up to me which one of those two beings I choose to be on a daily basis. I can accept the fragility. I can accept the weakness. I can accept the mortality. I can accept it all. But I can act on the side that is powerful. Or I can let them tie into me and destroy that powerful being's motives. Destroy the knowledge of that powerful being. And then there's nothing left but quivering fear. You can put a lot of false bravado on, you can go to the gym, you can get all pumped up, right? You say, I'm not afraid. Not. You're terrified. You're terrified of life. So many of you, you're terrified to live. You're not afraid to die, you're afraid to live. Bullshit.
bullshit. Don't let them take that from you. You have kids? They're taking it from your children right now, right under your nose. Their children will grow up and be more fearful than you are if you let this happen to them. And if you set the example of being fearful, you want the real world? Open your door, walk out back. Feel the wind on your neck. When somebody's scared, take their hand. When somebody's in need, give to them. Don't give to a charity. You, there's plenty of people that need right around you. Go give to them. Real world. Accept that you are a limited being. And at the same time, embrace the fact that you are an unlimited one. Until sometime next month, Jack signing off. Take care.